Perfect. Well, thank you uh, once again, everybody, for joining us today. My name is Robert Bale. I'm Vice President of Sales here at Junia. Uh, today is kind of a second part of a, of a webinar that we conducted in early April. Uh, the webinar that we started uh, at the kind of the beginning of the pandemic was um, to really give buildings a way to go on demand uh, during business hours, uh, meaning Monday through Friday, normal lease hours to, to take their buildings um, and essentially shut them off and go on demand uh, as a way one to um, operationally be more efficient, but also save energy in a very tenant friendly manner. Uh, today, the goal of this uh, webinar is one is to, for those of you who missed the first one, bring you up to speed on what we mean by going on demand and also give you some data points uh, to be able to utilize to understand what's the value of that, meaning in terms of energy savings. Um, how do you justify going on demand to your ownership and your asset managers, uh, just using some real life data and just give you some just general tips on things that we've seen in the marketplace. Um, so we'll. We'll spend maybe about 45 minutes together. Uh, once again, if you have questions, use the Q&A uh, in the Zoom navigation, and I will um, look forward to, uh, to working with all of you. So, um, so for those of you not familiar with us, um, what we're gonna go through here are a number of things. One is we're gonna just give you some background on Genia. So give you some background on who we are, what we do, for those of you who have not worked with us in the past. We'll talk about what have we learned since April. Um, and go through some of the things that we've seen in the marketplace. Uh, we'll talk about some uh, data, uh, how to use data to justify change in operationally, how you operate your buildings. Uh, we'll go through what does going on demand actually mean. We'll quantify that value of going on demand. I'll show you some actual real results from buildings. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the changes that you can implement today. And of course, then lastly, we'll have, uh, there's frequently asked questions that we'll kind of uh, roll through really quick. So for those of you not familiar with Genia, uh, we're a software company based here in Southern California out of Irvine. Uh, our technology, our cloud-based technology has been around since early uh, 2012, um, where we started selling a solution to manage overtime HVAC requests in multi-tenanted office buildings across the country. Uh, at that time, we had about 9 million square feet of office space on our platform. Uh, today, um, we're in over uh, 12 different countries. We have over 1,500 buildings and over 250 million square feet of office space on our platform. And our platform includes not only overtime HVAC, but submitter reading and billing, as well as access control. Um, we have over 75,000 users using our data, um, using our services every single day. We have a 99% customer retention rate, and that's at the building level. So as buildings change hands, property management companies change hands, we stay with the buildings year over year. Uh, and a big reason for that is our service. Uh, we provide 24-7 support for all of our customers, uh, as well as all of the tenants who use our services. Uh, we have a white glove approach when it comes to service. So for those of you who have worked with us, uh, you, you understand that we are a very responsive company. We take that very seriously, uh, which has also led us to a, having a 75 net promoter score. So get an idea of some of the customers that we, uh, who we get to serve across the country um, on, the, uh, on the commercial real estate side. So uh, what makes us different than any other um, commercial real estate technology company is one is uh, we're designed to be hardware agnostic. And what does that mean? So regardless of which service you're using for us, if it's overtime HVAC, we can work with any building automation system on the market, regardless of it's Siemens and overtrain JCI, it doesn't really matter to us. On the submeter billing side, um, we can work with any type of meter. Whether you have Eamon Demon or Leviton or Dent, our solution is designed to help you streamline the reading and billing for those meters. And on the access control side, all of our software is designed on open protocol, um, non-proprietary hardware, meaning anything that is Mercury-based. Uh, and the reason for that is it gives you a lot more flexibility uh, when it comes to software providers. You don't have to spend a lot of money to rip and replace that, and we can leverage a lot of the spend that you've already had. Uh, we're very big on integrations. We actually have official partnerships with both Building Engines as well as Angus, the two largest work order providers, where we can streamline getting the data into the work order system and ultimately into your accounting system. Um, and then we do a lot of integrations on the access control side with uh, Active Directory, Azure, uh, and Okta as well. Uh, we never charge setup fees for our software solutions. Uh, we want to make sure that this is affordable for building teams and that they can implement our services. So on the software side, uh, we never charge any setup fees. Um, sometimes there are setup fees required for hardware, meaning you may have to buy uh, meters or um, readers or controllers for access control. So sometimes there's some upfront capital, but for the software side, once again, we never charge anything upfront. 
And all of our solutions come with 24-7 uh, support by our employees based here in Southern California. And then we also have an Atlanta office and a Michigan office as well. Uh, but they're all of our employees servicing you 24-7. Uh, so three solutions. Uh, today we're gonna spend the majority of our time on our overtime HVAC service, which is a solution that allows us to automate uh, the request and fulfillment for overtime HVAC, uh, but now is being used a little bit differently because of the current environment. Uh, well, uh, our submeter billing service, once again, is designed to help streamline the reading and billing for your submeters. So your even demon submeters uh, that you have where engineers walk around once a month and write down the meter values and goes to a spreadsheet. Uh, we can streamline all that through our smartphone app as well as uh, integration to the building automatic management system. And then uh, we'll, do, we'll do a little bit on access control just to show you how you can utilize access control uh, to get data to help you um, operationally manage the building a little bit different when it comes to uh, HVAC service. So, so three solutions. Um, so what have we learned since the last webinar? Um, I mean, remember April, it, it seems like it seems like it was a year ago. That's how long uh, quarantine has seemed to last. So, you know, in, in April uh, and even in early March, everybody thought that this was going to be kind of for three months, right? Our plan, even for our office, was we go home uh, mid-March, we start work from home, we get all prepped, and then we're back in the office by June. Um, obviously, here I am in August and still in my bedroom doing work. Uh, so that's that's changed and compared to what everybody thought was going to happen. And our customers, you know, our building operators who we work with across the nation, um, you know, everybody was preparing for a big influx of people coming into right into late June, into early July, and obviously that just hasn't happened. So you know, operators have been constantly changing how do you look at the building, how do you run the building, uh, how are you prepared for people coming back. I know there's signage everywhere, there's excessive cleaning, uh, you're staggering schedules, things like that. And, and now it's still changing every single day, things are changing and you know, the building operators, um, you know, they're trying to prepare for that, but in an ever-changing environment that can become a challenge. Uh, and then vendor partners, um, you know, we've had to change uh, on terms of how do we adapt to this new environment. One is, you know, we're doing more web meetings, of course, but also even looking at our product offerings is what is a different use case for our products to help service our customers better. So whereas our normal overtime HVAC service was, you know, fully occupied buildings, people working late, and you're spending a lot of money uh, on overtime air, uh, after hours, well, you know, people are rarely in the buildings now. They're not working late. So is there a different way to utilize our service to help you operate the building more efficiently? And of course there is, which is why we're here today. It's the concept of going on demand during business hours and giving tenants the ability to request overtime to request air uh, from our app Monday through Friday from nine to five. So it's a totally different use case for our service and we've had to adapt as a business. Um, the other thing we've also learned is in order to make some of these big changes, um, you know, building teams and um, need to have um, usable data uh, to justify why you're making changes. And so, so what do I mean by you know having access to usable data to justify change? So, so when it relates to going on demand, um, where do you start? Because we have a lot of people who've had concerns about going on demand because they're not sure that the tenants will adopt it. Uh, they're not sure if they, it makes uh, financial sense to actually go on demand during business hours. Um, and then you're not really sure where to start because you're not always have visibility into how the tenants are interacting with the space. And so, so that lack of uh, visibility has made it a challenge for some building teams to go on demand. Uh, so that's why I say, you know, we did look really, what is the usable data? And when I look at usable data is, you know, the first thing that anybody should start with, if you're looking to take your building on demand, and this is not just regardless if you use our service or not, anything, just to save on energy is, you know, let's find actionable data to justify that change, meaning running the building um, less frequently during business hours. And so what I always, what I recommend is you start with your access control system. You take a look at the daily logs to see how many active users are coming into the system. You compare over time. So here's a building they, you know, back in March, they had 600, 645 users approximately per day coming into the building. And you compare that to July, well, you see a trend where it's only, you know, bouncing 240, 250 uh, people coming into the building on a daily basis. You know, that's just one place to start is how do you look at, okay, who's actually coming into the building? You know, I recommend using your access control system for that. You know, then beyond that is you take all the access control data and you combine that with what you know about the building management system, meaning 
if I see a trend where um, based upon the access control log, I know which tenants are coming in by which floor they occupy, well, okay, maybe I run a recurring request um, based upon the BMS and I shut off the rest of the building. But you can utilize the two data points together to say, how do we operate this building more efficiently? And you're using data to justify that. Now, if, if, you're, if your access control system can't break this out for you, um, not that we're doing an access control demo here, but I'm gonna show you what you should be looking at in terms of access control. So when you log into your access control system, and this is obviously a product that we sell, uh, you know, when I come in, I can see the attendance, I can see the users, I can see the monthly attendance, but more importantly is, you know, what you should be able to do from any access control system is drill down into the overall activity logs and understand by tenant who's coming into the building so that you can make the appropriate adjustments to your schedules. So I can come in, I can filter, and I can say, I need to know everybody who's coming into the building over the last month. And I want to know by, you know, by event door. So the first floor. And now you have real data. So you know, okay, all the users by which tenant when they're coming in over the last month. You can export that into Excel, and then you can go ahead and say, okay, we know all these tenants are coming in. These tenants occupy these floors. The rest of the floors aren't being touched. So if you've got mechanically your building as a floor by floor control, uh, controlled building, you now have real data to say, okay, I got to run these particular floors for these tenants because they're coming in on a regular basis. But the rest of the building, I have an opportunity now to shut it off or reduce the runtime on that equipment. And then from there is how do you do that? And that's what we'll get into the rest of this, but I just wanted to give you an idea of you know, where to start. That's a lot of challenges a lot of building teams have had and that we've been asked about is like, I don't know where to start. And this is where we always recommend you start. Start with the access control because it tells you who's coming into the building. You break it down by tenant and then you know which, te which floors those tenants occupy. So, so that's just a starting point. Um, and then from there it's okay, let's, let's bring in the concept of going on demand. So what does on demand really mean? So what it means is during Monday through Friday, normal lease hours, instead of running the building uh, like a normal schedule, is you reduce the, the equipment runtime and you go on demand, meaning tell the tenants, if you're gonna come in, you turn it on whenever you need it. So you turn off the central plant, you run either order minimum loads, and you simply inform the tenants that HVAC services are available via our app or our website. Um, you'll still run, you know, normal ventilation. We have a lot of building teams that run normal ventilation in the morning, late in the afternoon. Uh, but, you know, with uh, so few tenants in the building, there's no reason to run the entire building. It's totally available to them because they can come in anytime they need it. They can request air whenever time they need it. Um, and, and in most markets, it also doesn't require that the building operators be on site. Obviously, your engineering staff is normally on site, but you can do this all remotely. So it allows you to also be touchless. Uh, so you can save energy in a very tenant-friendly manner. Now, there's also a significant difference between by request and on demand. So most buildings, if they don't have a system like ours in the building, is they're uh, requiring the tenants to make a request to turn on air. Uh, so HPAC is provided by request only. Uh, they have to submit a request by five o'clock the night before, and the engineer has to program the building automation system, uh, but the tenants can't turn anything off if they leave early. I know we're in a different world where people think they're going to come in and then something happens. You've got your kids at home now, your spouse is at home, so you have to be um, you have to be home and you don't essentially go to the office where now you may be in situations where you're running the building unnecessarily. As opposed to going truly on demand, you use a solution like ours where it's a smartphone app, iPhone or Android. I can request service when I need it. There's not going to be any charge because it's during business hours. Um, it will fulfill the request because we're physically connected to the building. I'll show you how that works in a second here. We send email notifications so the property team is fully informed um, and it's 100% automated. So now you're giving the power to the tenants to get everything they need and it removes the guessing out of this, but of course allows you to save a substantial amount of energy. And what is the value of that? So what we wanted to do as part of the last study is, like I said, we took a, took a number of buildings that went on demand as now we've gone ahead and said, okay, how do we quantify that so that, you know, building teams who want to take this approach can justify it to their asset manager, to their owner, um, because obviously there has to be a return on this, right? One is, you know, is it tenant friendly? It can be. 
uh, very, very friendly. And but ultimately, it's like, what is the real savings going to be? So we took, um, we want to do kind of a case study here where we look at buildings of similar size and similar geographies and kind of compare the results to them. Um, so we've got some sites in Atlanta, Houston, and Southern California. We tried to you know, be very cognizant in terms of the square footages of buildings that we're comparing against. We didn't want to compare, say, New York to LA because one, buildings operate differently. Um, also, weather is different, um, you know, and even comparing and trying to compare Chicago to Houston is almost impossible because in April, I have a feeling it was still snowing in Chicago because there's crazy weather there. So we wanted to be, you know, as, as apples to apples as possible. And what we found is that that all buildings uh, kind of in the case study had a significant amount of energy savings. But those buildings that implemented our service to be on demand um, all the time, meaning Monday through Friday um, during lease hours, uh, saved a substantial amount of energy. Uh, so in this particular case study of the, uh, the demand buildings versus the control buildings, they had a 26% reduction in uh, overall energy consumption. Uh, compared to just some of the control buildings that um, they reduced because people weren't in. So you kind of run back a little bit, but those ones who really took advantage and said, okay, we can really go on demand here at a 26% reduction in KWH and their cost, uh, meaning utility costs went down 16%. Um, so it's a substantial improvement and it almost doubles um, you know, what we saw in the control buildings. When I look at this by a building by building basis, uh, four of the five properties saw their energy consumption decrease by over 20%. Uh, they're the ones who moved on demand pretty much immediately. They adopted it the entire second quarter and they're still on demand to this day. Uh, but we saw four of those five buildings have a reduction of over 20% um, of KWH cost and their overall cost gone down significantly. Uh, so there is a substantial opportunity to really reduce um, reduce the overall spend on energy, reduce energy consumption, you're reducing runtime on equipment, and you're doing it all in a tenant friendly manner, uh, utilizing it full of ours. So what do you need to do? How do you implement something like this? Well, the first thing you do is you need to make some changes to the BMS schedules. So, you know, and that's, we have a lot of building teams ask us like, okay, what do I, what do I do from a practical sense? Um, the first thing you do is you need to make some changes to the weekday BMS schedules. You want to look at running during business hours, uh, just like an on-demand Saturday or a minor holiday. You remove the, the normal HVAC schedules from the BMS. Don't remove any external lighting schedules, of course. You want to remove the start and top times or set it to disabled. Um, if you need to run equipment at least once a day just for ventilation purposes, because we're having more and more requirements for ventilation, do it in the morning for a few hours, do it in the evening for a few hours. Um, and then, of course, you're going to run appropriate minimum loads uh, for central plant, for chillers and central plants. And then what you're going to do from there is give your tenants the tool, give them control to request air when they need it. So it's, you know, first step is like, let's understand, can we go on demand based upon the tenant information that we assume from the access, access control log? We understand the value of this. So what's the potential for energy savings? And then we say, okay, well, what do we practically do at the building automation system? And now how do we empower the tenants to take advantage of this? And you use our solution for that. So what we do is we call it tenant facing automation. So we give the tenants an app to request HVAC service whenever they need it. So I can log in, I can request a service immediately during lease hours, say nine to five, there's not gonna be any charge for this. Um, it's monitored 24 seven. So if I need help at any time, there's junior employees available to help. It obviously helps drive significant energy savings uh, and it streamlines the entire process plus gives you visibility uh, to who is making requests in the buildings. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna walk everybody just through a live demo of how that works from a tenant perspective. So if I'm a tenant in the building, I can come in, I go ahead and log in. If I forgot my password, I can forget it. Uh, I can reset it. If I need help, I can call an 866 number. Go ahead and log in. Now, depending on my lease, obviously determines what I'm allowed to turn on. So I can come in and say, I work in sales. I need to turn on my sales suite. And I need to start service tomorrow because I decided I'm gonna, I need to get out of my house tomorrow and get away from my children. I'm going to go work from nine uh, for about four hours and need to leave my house. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say I need to from, from 12 hours for four hours, proceed with request. Now you'll notice it's scheduled to start from nine till one and there's no cost because obviously that's during lease hours, which is perfect. I hit proceed with request. 
and my request now is put into the system. The other thing that will happen is a confirmation email will be sent out. Because obviously, I know a lot of property teams, you're having staggered schedules. You may be at home. You're not actually at the building. Well, our system is going to send you an email confirmation that somebody has made a request for service. I see Rob Vale has made a request. I need to leave my house. Uh, and there's obviously no charge. So it's not some type of jailbreak where you don't know who is actually entering the building. You have visibility into that. So you know exactly when I'm, when I'm coming into the site. The other thing we do is we teach your tenant users, if you're going to leave early, you can take your request out of the system. So instead of guessing as to how many hours I'm going to be office, I may be done after two hours. My wife's like, you got to get home. Their kids are driving me nuts, which is fine and happens. I just go ahead and hit delete, click OK. And what it'll do is it'll stop. Um, it'll take my request out of the system. It'll stop the equipment if it's necessary. It also sends a cancellation email. Let me know that uh, that I've canceled service uh, as well. Uh, we do have a question. So how long would it take uh, the tenant space to become fully cooled if using the on-demand service? So that depends uh, mechanically on how your building works. So if you if it's the middle of summer, like right now, and you know it takes uh, two hours to get to comfort uh, based upon the plant and the load on the equipment, if the building is fully off, um, you probably have to start up a little bit earlier. And some of that's a training exercise, kind of like what we do on Sundays. We teach the tenants, if you're going to come on Sunday, it's 100 degrees out, put your request in two hours early. Now, during business hours, um, especially in areas where it's extremely hot, so like Texas, you probably actually wouldn't shut the building totally off and go totally on demand Monday through Friday. You'd run a very minimum load, meaning you have enough load to have the central plants uh, or the chiller supported. You probably run the main lobby and possibly a couple of vacant floors. And that way, when somebody needs to come in and it ramps up service. So it depends mechanically how the building works. If you've got a heat pump building, it works a lot faster. If you have full DDC, it works very, very fast. Uh, it just depends mechanically on how it works. Every building's a little bit different. But we can work with them those nuances to help on start times and, uh, and stop times as well. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint real quick. So once again, it's now you can give your tenants a tool to request HVAC service whenever they need it. Uh, you've gone on demand, you're saving energy, and you're saving some time. So how does it physically work with us connecting to the building? So what we send out to the building is a small device about the size of a router. And what it is is a microprocessor um, that allows us to communicate with your building automation system. And we can work with anything on the market. So Siemens, Andover Train, JCI. In fact, we have an official partnership with Siemens uh, where if you have a Siemens building and you need something, a service like ours uh, for overtime HVAC, they actually refer you to us. Um, the device goes on site, it plugs into the same network as the building automation system, and from there we leverage all the programming that's already been done with your controls contractor. So we go ahead and we just command a point at a higher priority than the schedule, uh, service turns on, when service is rendered we release the point and the normal schedule the building takes over. Uh, so it's very innocuous, it's very easy to implement a service like this. So, you know, the, the way that we do go to, go to market is the first thing we do is we have a kickoff call. We introduce our team to your team. We get the device all set up. We get it sent out to the building. So we do a lot of testing to make sure when we put in a command, the right equipment turns on. Uh, we set up the entire tenant database, whatever integrations, um, and then we actually train everybody. So we train all of the property team on how to use the system. We train all of your tenants on how to use the system. And we provide ongoing support 24-7. So if somebody uh, in the building has an issue at 2 o'clock in the morning and they don't know their username and password, they can actually call an 866 number and talk to a Jania employee. Uh, we'll go ahead and get them all set up, reset as much as they need to, and of course, we'll keep the building team uh, in the loop the entire time. Um, but it's done 100% remote, so we never actually have to come on site. We just pre-program our device, we ship it to you, and then we do map all of the points. So I'm going to just go through briefly just some frequently asked questions that we get. So, um, you know, so this is this obviously stems from earlier in the year. You know, will will tenants consider this an opportunity to not pay rent because the building service is not being provided? You know, in this environment, you know, there's there might be some tendency to ask for rent abatement um, for a variety of reasons. But with this service, one is the building is fully operational. You're providing service. You're just doing this in a, in a very friendly manner to save on energy. Ultimately, that saves them on operational expenses, but you're giving them the switch to turn it on. And it's a simple conversation. It's like, 
Why are we going to run the building unnecessarily? You're not here, but we're going to make it very convenient for you to request when you need it. Uh, we had a lot of people want to know what is the best way to roll this out. So there's a couple things. One is you can just do it. Uh, for those tenants who are already accustomed to using our service and they're accustomed to being on demand uh, on the weekends and minor holidays, you can just turn the service off, tell them this is what we're doing with Genia Monday through Friday. Um, you know, obviously, if you're going to look to implement this, of course, we recommend you look at the access control logs. You figure out which tenants are coming in frequently. We can put in recurring requests for them, and you shut off the rest of the building or go on demand for the rest of the building. Uh, and you can, of course, you can pull your tenants, and you probably are doing that already to try and get a gauge when people are expected to come back to the office. Um, but, you know, we recommend being in constant communication with the tenants, and, of course, we can help facilitate the rollout to the tenants as well. How much money can you save? So obviously every building is a little bit differently. So I showed you, you know, just a few buildings. We had, you know, four of the five buildings had over 20% energy savings by going on demand. Uh, some is less. And it depends really on a number of things. It depends on obviously the occupancy of the building. Uh, mechanically, how is the building set up? If you've got full DDC controls, you can really shut off a lot. If it requires and have a minimum load, you have to turn on half the building. You're probably not saving as much energy. Um, and of course, your utility rates, you know, depending on the market that you're in, uh, what is your overall spend? Um, but there is a significant opportunity to save energy by reducing runtime. And of course, we're here to help you quantify that. So as you're trying to justify this to your asset managers and your ownership groups, uh, we want to be a partner with you to help you quantify that. Um, our system takes 30 to 45 days to implement. Um, we've actually done it in eight business days. So we'd be very, very quick uh, and very you know, fast to get you going. But we're going to do it right versus fast. And in this environment, because obviously there's not a lot of people in buildings right now, uh, it really makes it easy to implement buildings quickly right now. Um, how much does it cost? Our, we do a price per square foot. Uh, what we ask for is a 12-month agreement and a fixed monthly fee based upon the square footage of the building. Uh, we're a price list company, so for those of you who need it, we're happy to overall send you a price list between myself or anybody, any member of the, uh, the sales team. If you're not totally happy after 12 months, you cancel it, you send us back our device, and there's no further financial obligation. But the 24-7 support includes, I mean, the, the agreement includes 24-7 support, all the training, all the setup, all the ongoing training, ongoing maintenance, we're all inclusive and we even do portfolio discounts as well you know we want to encourage good behavior of rolling this out to an entire portfolio um, in, in terms of handling any uniqueness when it comes to the building so uh, our system is totally built to handle uh, minimum loads so if you require four floors to meet a minimum for your chiller uh, we can we can handle that um, it doesn't, you know, we just work very closely with the engineer, the controls contractors to set things up, but we can handle all that. And of course, we can work with any um, BMS in the market, even old uh, legacy systems that are 20 years old, we can connect to. So we have ways to communicate with pretty much anything that's on the marketplace. And then, you know, we get a lot of this question like, uh, what does our software do to the BMS? One is we don't change anything in your automation system. We're not changing overall schedules, not changing set points. What we're doing is leveraging uh, the program that's already been done. So our system is simple, on off. Uh, when somebody makes a request, we do a binary point to command service to turn on. Your BMS is then programmed to turn on all the appropriate equipment. So if it's a fan, an air handler, ultimately ramping up the chillers, your BMS is already pre-programmed to do that. We're just going to leverage what's already done. So that's why it's really easy to roll this out to buildings and also to take advantage of going on demand is because we can leverage all the pre-programming that's already happened at the site uh, to make this advantageous for you and for your tenants. Um, how we know equipment being turned on to tenants? So obviously I showed you guys the email confirmation. So anytime a request is made, there's a confirmation email that goes out to the tenant. So obviously your office manager will know if one of their employees in the building. Uh, building property managers will know, as well as the engineers. We provide a pending request report as well, so you know standing requests for the upcoming weekend. And then, of course, you have a dashboard where you can see any request that's in the system by any person who's made it. So, uh, once again, uh, there's a lot of transparency. We give you full visibility to who's coming into the building and when. Um, how does our system work when uh, people are doing maintenance? So safety is obviously a big deal. So obviously from a building perspective, you're going to do uh, your own standard lockout tagout. 
Um, and then what we do is we have maintenance requests that we can put in the system. So if you're telling us we're going to do maintenance uh, this weekend for our, because we're going to work on, you know, the first five floors of the building on the air handlers and fans, uh, we'll put in a maintenance, uh, a maintenance notice notification in the system so nobody can make a request. And it'll just be notification, contact building management uh, when service is ready again. Uh, we can do early start as well. So to the earlier question about, you know, how long does it take for a building to get comfortable? Uh, that depends, you know, mechanically how the building is set up. Then, of course, we'll leverage um, the knowledge of your building uh, engineering staff to understand, okay, when does it, if a request is for Saturday to get to comfort, when do we have to turn the building on? And so if it's an hour, if it's two hours, you know, some points of the parts of the country, there's certain times of year we have to turn on four hours early. Some parts of the country, it just makes more sense in the month, especially the month of August, where it's ridiculously hot, to run the buildings 24 seven at a bare minimum load. After that, it's just ramping up to new floors, turning on fans and air handlers as appropriate. Um, does our platform confirm that equipment is being turned on when a tenant service uh, request service? So what we confirm is that a point uh, goes from off to on. So we know in the automation system that a request is made and a point was turned uh, on. So meaning it was a command was turned on. Be downstream though, we do not know if a fan physically turns on. Um, so a lot of times we'll get calls from a tenant that says, you know, I put in a request and I don't feel anything happening in the building. It probably didn't work. You know, our first thing we do is we look at, uh, we have a, you know, we have a, a read only access to the front end of the BMS. We look, okay, does the command good? Uh, if it wasn't good, we reissue the command and then we'll see if the command was good, meaning the point was turned on. Um, and if the point was turned on down there, well, a lot of times we'll tell the tenants, hey, it's a big building, it takes a little while before it gets comfortable. You know, give us a call in about five minutes if for some reason you don't hear anything. We'll ask them to listen. Uh, if for some reason it still doesn't work, then part of our service is we actually reach out to the on-call engineer and say, you've got tenants requesting service. Uh, we can't communicate with the building. Uh, and either your controllers are offline, your BMS is offline. Uh, we'll know the buildings are down oftentimes before you do. Uh, but that's just part of our ongoing service and working directly with the engineering staff. Other than that, I want to thank everybody for our time. I know this was um, you know, a little bit different uh, presentation, but I, I hope this was valuable for you. Uh, for those of you who are interested in taking your buildings on demand, we have a special email on demand at getchenia.com. You can call our 714 number as well as our headquarters and talk to any member of our sales team uh, for your existing customers. For those of you who are interested in our service uh, and implementing uh, into your building, uh, feel free to reach out to us. I'm more than happy to guide you through the, uh, the sales process, talk specifically at your building and the systems that you have and how do we communicate with your buildings. Uh, once again, this, uh, this recording will be sent out um, probably later today. Uh, we do have an official white paper coming out in about a week. Uh, for those of you who have any questions, um, I'll, I'll stay on for just another second, see if there's any more Q&A going to pop in. Okay. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have right now. Uh, once again, thank you so much, everybody, for your time, um, and look forward to working with all of you. Take care. Oh, wait. Can I go back to the slide with the confirmation? Yes. Hold on one second, Jamie. So here's the confirmation email, I'm assuming is what you're asking about. So the confirmation email um, is, is here. So anytime a, uh, a person makes a request, a confirmation email is sent. That confirmation email goes to the um, property managers, the building engineers, as well as the tenants. Sorry, I'm gonna go to the slide. So once again, email confirmation goes to the tenant. Uh, there's a pending request report that can be sent out automatically on a weekly basis. And then of course, there's a dashboard where you can see all the individual requests. So here's our here's our here's our uh, here's the file, Jamie. So anytime a request is made, 
Uh, once again, the email confirmation goes to the person who made the request, uh, as well as their office managers, the property team. Uh, there's a pending request report that we can set up for you. And of course, you can go in any time into the portal and see the um, and see the see that as well. So uh, more than happy to walk you through that as well for your individual building. So. Wonderful. Well, once again, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, Oh, sorry, one more question just popped in. Can you share any feedback received from tenants or property management teams? So, um, so yeah, we've had actually had a number of buildings where they adopted it very quickly, meaning as soon as um, April 1 came, they said, okay, we're going to go on demand. Um, and it was easy adoptable primarily because the tenants were accustomed to using our service. Uh, the big trick was we weren't sure how long this was going to last. So when it got to uh, May, we did a, you know, a second reach out to all the building teams. Okay, are you ready to go back to a normal schedule or not? And the number of buildings um, that we've had, a very high percentage said, we're just staying on demand like this because one is the, the attendance is low in the buildings, but also the usability of the system has been easy. So it was an easy rollout to people. Um, so, you know, there's uh, sites up in San Francisco, uh, Berkeley Air Center being one of them, uh, where they had a very, very well received um, preview of this. And it's really, like I said, it's really a custom of those tenants who are used to using our system. So the adoption has been great. We've also installed a lot of new buildings since that time as well. And they've immediately been able to go on demand uh, because we can, because it's easy to use, the adoption rate goes up because it's like, they tell the tenants, here's an app request it whenever you need it and those tenants are ready to go ahead and adopt that so um but more than happy to have you know some one-on-one -on -one conversations or put you in touch with some of the building teams as well uh, if you guys want to send an email um afterwards so. and with that we'll go ahead and uh, we'll stop the recording